what a beautiful evening what wonderful people especially who cannot ask questions and cannot disagree i like ted's format it's almost like uh, indian family where one speaks and everybody shuts up and listens emotional intelligence imperative for thought sustenance this event's theme of thoughts and actions being sustainable is interesting because right at the beginning i wish to kind of um, include my thought into it that sustainable thoughts and actions are only possible if they are effective thoughts and actions and uh, and there is one forgotten component uh, not just in about in the ted theme but also in the life we lead today <clears throat> the forgotten component though uh, i would have rather in my regular sessions interacted and got it from you but for now i have to say it myself is the emotion is just what i did when i came onto the stage as to how beautiful this weather is and how uh, lovely you as audience are and how beautiful the kids are and how smart they were when they came up and spoke the little things the birds which we which flew over us and the stars which might just come up these things mean not much nowadays i'm not taking a pot shot at the hectic urban lives we live but it is human today not to feel but to think it's okay to be human today to think and act day in day out and the competition is not about how much you feel or how do you feel the competition is about how can you think how fast can you think how much can you act how fast can you act how better can you act than others uh those were the days just imagine i just leave you with three questions while i go into the next level of presentation number 1 are we as emotional first of all are we emotional as human beings are we as a race emotional number 2 are we emotional in comparison to our ancestors they could be very recent ancestors first second third generation upwards are we number 3 is are we more emotional or the animals in the planet other animals in this planet are more emotional than us these three questions i suppose in the next few minutes if i speak you should be able to get the answers for what is an emotion my fourth question which i'll address right away think about it you need to think what is an emotion if you human and if you can naturally feel feeling is an emotion but if i ask you what is the definition of an emotion trust me it's not easy to comprehend to recollect or to write down in two sentences and say this is emotion and if one of you did it or few of you did it wonderful congratulations you're still living emotion is the cornerstone of life if you want sustainable thoughts and actions in your school in your community in the nation and in the world we should stop for a while and ask ourselves where are we going what is human race evolving to be is the human evolution progressive or regressive and if it is left to me which i have a right to my own personal opinion about where we are going i think we are endangered i have seen this advertisement about how many tigers are left and you blink and another tiger dies I think there should be somebody I think one day if I get a chance I'll borrow some cameras Sita seems to have a lot of cameras in the school and shoot one you blink two times and human race is is diminishing day by day the anthropologists who sit in the small corners are now worried what is happening to homo sapiens the ice age human the stone age human the same species today has no resemblance as i go forward i'll also show you they don't have resemblance even physiologically especially the brain part and it's that scary we are 
almost a new species who have not been named because Darwin is no more. Now maybe we have to name ourselves. Ramchandra Murthy Garu can help us. I believe life is about emotions. I believe it's the small little things, the smiles, the hugs, the kisses, the love, the pats, the affection, the sharing, the caring. That's what life is. But today you don't rate your child on that basis, right? <laughs> you don't say the child is great because he gives a lot of hugs. You don't say the child is great because he remembers names of the fellow children. You don't say this guy will become a great superstar because he can pick up a conversation with anybody and everybody. Young age, five years, six years, ten years old children. And I think there are some children who came up here and who spoke so well, who expressed so well who had the ability, the clarity, because they felt, they're passionate. I know you by heart it a little bit, that's a different story. But they had a passion for it. I think every action we perform, ladies and gentlemen, this is a blanket statement I'm making, you can go back home and think over it, over the night. You could have contested me now, you cannot. Every action we perform in our life, every single action we perform in our life, I'm, I'm giving you a blanket one is to satisfy a feeling, period. It is to satisfy a certain emotion that we perform every single action. Now if it is of that phenomenally important component in our life, is to satiate or satisfy a feeling, how much do we know about that feeling, that emotion? In the basic academic sense, it is the response to stimulus. It could be internal response to internal stimulus, external response to internal stimulus. It could be that I'm walking by and I smelled sambar and I felt hungry, or I felt hungry and I went to chicken biryani, what is that, biryani house. The idea is a feeling which is internally triggered could be with your physiology, and a feeling which is externally triggered could be by others, or an event, or a situation. But it is the feeling which drives thoughts. So if you talk about sustenance of thoughts, we've got to stop, take two steps backwards, and we've got to think about feelings. Today, as Ramchandra Murthy Garu sits and talks to these warring factions, what is every action pointed at? An emotion. All that in between, the calculations and the numbers and the money and the industry, and all has no relevance to these individuals who are fighting for what they're fighting for, or who are opposing. They have certain emotions. So it is just the war of emotions. And when you take those things off, then it's pure logic as to what is beneficial, what is not. And that is thought. And then obviously, give or not give is an action. So. Response to stimulus, internal and external. Let me tell you something very dangerous. How many times are you guilty of not eating when you are hungry, not drinking when you are thirsty, not hugging when you need a hug, or not getting when you needed a hug, and not kissing enough, or not shaking hands enough, not patting enough, not loving enough. I don't want to get into other areas, the kids. So if you are not, then understand, it's not just that you are, your, your emotional fulfillment is reduced, thereby you are emotionally unhealthy. It is also that, that your internal triggers are going to slowly, slowly, slowly degenerate. Thereby you feel less. I don't want to go deeper. You feel very less. And today, in a socially hypnotic kind of a situation we live in, we actually feel way, way, way less than what our mothers grandmothers or grand-grandmothers used to feel. Emotion, ladies and gentlemen, it is success, honor, freedom, shame, anger, dutiful, love, mother's love, ecstasy, pride, shattering, Hopeless, deprived, feelings. These are feelings, a mixed bag of emotions. 
this is the core of human life where we have walked many miles away from. If you look at think what to do, where to do, I am hungry, what to eat, where to eat, how to eat, with whom to eat, thoughts, feelings are spontaneous, thoughts are not, thoughts are programmed, thoughts are dependent, feelings are not. So you cannot question feelings, you cannot debate feelings, you cannot slap a child and say don't cry. <laughs> and you have to be a big fool like George W. Bush to tell a nation don't feel occupied, underline that, don't feel occupied, feel liberated, he's also telling how to feel. Can there be a better dictator? Oh, I mean actually all dictators do that. <laughs> they tell you that what you're feeling is wrong, they'll also give you an alternate, okay, good people. They'll tell you this is how you should feel, <laughs> idiots, okay, and actions, feelings, thoughts and actions. Feelings drives thoughts, thoughts drive actions. So on that eventful day when Mahatma Gandhi was thrown off the train, he felt the same feelings, feelings you or me or Sita would have felt. Same, ineffective, negative feelings. Disrespect, shame, disregard, all sorts of negative feelings. But what kind of thoughts emerged out of that? And what kind of actions did it lead to is the question. So you can intervene, you can actually intervene at either of these three levels to create a sustainable thought and action pattern. Feelings you might not be able to do much because they're natural, but you can intervene at thoughts and ask yourself, do I need to think like this? Can I think better? Can I think more effective? So actions obviously are subservient to thoughts. So and obviously the pyramid shows the base is big. Feelings constitute your identity. So whatever you feel is what you actually become. And there's so much to it, but there's so little time. We have been feeling less and thinking more. There's no debate on that. You can go back and think about it. That right from the morning till the evening, you're only thinking. Feelings come very, very rarely. And of course, acting a lot more. We are machines, almost close. Now if you really look at the brain, I know Sirisha is here, doctor. She'll also tell you that amygdala, you can see the purple part, the purple gland. What did we do? Yeah, okay. The purple gland, my laser isn't working, so I'll not feel sorry for it. The purple gland, which is of nail size, is supposed to be the brain responsible for feelings. It is nail size today, and the thinking brain is what you see in folded portion. And majority of your skull is occupied by that today. And that is responsible for thinking. I'll make it quick and easy for you to die. It was opposite a few million years back in human brain. It was opposite. The nail sized used to be that sized and that size used to be nail sized. So we were feeling so much and thinking so less. And today, in the name and the garb of development, what we are doing to ourselves, God only knows, not human. And let's see, that's a regressive evolution of human being. More thoughts, more demons, ladies and gentlemen, and less sustenance. More thoughts, more development, more growth, more production, more consumerism, as the kids said. More carbon footprint. Okay, more absolute vodka. Oh, absolute corruption, I'm sorry. And lack of expression. Shut your mouth, close your eyes, close your ears, and see what's happening around. Don't talk about it. Impression. Say what others want to hear, but don't say what you want to say. Because if you say that, man, think of the consequences. Think, underline that. Think. Don't feel. So all the leaders feel more. Think less. That's why they express. Terrorism. What can I say? I mean, it is, it, it, it is not easy. Your physiology is not going to allow you to feel more. It's too small, an organ. But my suggestion, my friends, I try to beat it. I try to feel more. Pratibha, is an, Pratibha I think, will vouch for it. We have less fights, we have more fights because I feel more. 
start feeling more and maybe also look at the degree of feelings okay it's not just enough to feel more what kind of degree of feelings what kind of effective feelings are you feeling and then i think that's where the sustenance lies reward people who feel i'm not saying don't reward people who can think smart people who have great iq but reward those kids reward those ladies and gentlemen who can feel and who can express and who can gratify their feelings and be human thank you